Okay, so we've had a bit of a dodgy start. Um, we weren't quite ready. I don't think we were that straight, um, but we sort of got going and um, realised that once we were back on, we were starting to move. At this point, we actually thought, both of us thought that we were winning. We were not. I think we were quite far back. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'd say maybe here we're just dumping a little bit and throwing the hands away. We need to just start and complete a bit, but we're still um, finishing off the start. Um, and I remember calling here that we just needed to trust what we'd got and what we were doing because we weren't in the position that we were thinking we'd be in. Um, but I was calling a lot for trust. And then I don't know if you can see there, but quite a little bit like under the handle, but like this round back, throwing it away rather than like actually up and completing it. Um, But we're starting to move, which was exciting. And one thing we would they we took into the next World Cup to work on was the front end, just trying to get in a bit sharper. Um, I mean, I think that's what Evan Rowe tries to do, isn't it? But um, <laughs> I think like we quite like that to get in rather than like in and on direct. Um, but then through this middle bit, we start to move. And that's just sort of trusting our length, trusting our power and the training that we put in. Has she got a long body? That's right. As well as being um, significant as well. So we've got the same length legs. Right. So I have very long legs and no body. So I actually have to sit on a high chair. <laughs> yeah, it's a family thing, I just <laughs> um, So she is just very tall, but we actually do have like very similar length legs, um, which actually I think is quite good here. Actually, our legs are very in down together. Yeah. Um, when we first got in the pair, it, it was not. <laughs> um, we did a speed order at Cabersham and we were not not together. <laughs> we were finishing it like our knees, but um, yeah, we're actually very. Quite, like quite well matched up on the legs to be honest but yeah I do have to sit on a high chair just so I look normal high <laughs> I thought I was tall and then I met Esme <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah I think this is we start and get a bit of like more belief in ourselves here because we're just trucking through um we never sort of lost faith that we were down um just yeah kept moving and kept inching away Um, and we just wanted to get as much gap as we could so that if anyone tried to come back at us or finish, we'd got sort of room to move, a bit of breathing space. Um, I think one thing that we, other thing we were looked at from this video um, was our stern. So if you, when you get to the couch, it's dipping down quite a lot. Um, so it's quite a lot of weight in the stern, which don't want it to be it, there will be some dip but you don't want it to be down for too long mm. um and ours is like quite down it's like quite aggressive um i always think like if the boat's dipping it's wrong but it's about rising yeah it falling, wants to sort of bob, bob. It's, yeah it's, it actually feels quite good to yeah feel, to like feel like you're picking the whole boat up on the rise yeah exactly yeah but there's quite a lot of dip on the stern and then the blades are like that mm. It's like quite a lot of time out of the air, uh, yeah. in the air, sorry. Um, so sort of like, that's what we move to focus on. Um, What's it post this race? So yeah, post yeah. Belgrade for Lucerne. And I think then I started to call it um, that we were in gold. And I think I think we both actually couldn't quite believe it um because we it's both of us sort of new to the event we didn't and it's obviously a new olympic year not olympic year, it's the start of a new olympiad so we didn't know anything the chileans they'd done um qualifiers olympic qualifi qualification regatta 
but we didn't know anything about anyone. Mm. Um, so we were like in a bit of an unknown position. Um, so I think, well, at this point, we were both like very excited about what we were achieving and what like potential that we had. Um, so yeah, I just remember just trying to enjoy being out ahead, but also being like, oh my goodness me, we're actually in first. I did, um, I did look around a lot just to double check that there wasn't anyone behind us, <laughs> just to be sure. Do you like the new kit? Um, I like what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, I do like what it looks like, but the quality is not great, which is a bit frustrating, especially because it's Nike. Yeah. Um, I think it's quite weird. It's, I mean, it always changes for, for World Cups and stuff, but of course, so used to the all blue look, the yeah. seeing red, seeing red people, coming towards yeah. you, it's, it's quite hard to spot people because you're always looking out for the blue. Mm. Um, yeah, the, I don't know if you heard much about the quality of it or not. No, I've heard nothing. Um, so, like if, you, if it's like one piece obviously but you sort of have like your top and your bottom and normally it would be sewn together there's like a bit of a seam but they've glued it right so when it gets a bit hot sometimes it melts of course. so your one piece turns into two pieces <laughs> oh god <laughs> <laughs> i think actually uh, it was callum dixon wasn't yeah. in the single at, at belgrade his um went at the start and he said he remembers pulling it up and he was next to ollie's idler and um he was like well Kind of like lost all my nerves now because all his eyes was all his eyes was like looking at me like he's got a hold in his eye. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. First gold. There you go. First gold. Yeah. We had a lot to work on. <laughs> which was good though it is good because then you've got yeah because if you're winning and yeah. you've got somewhere to build on it's, yeah exactly it's um i think actually the commentary they said that we were smiling and they were enjoying winning and all of that and then we died <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, we were not enjoying <laughs> any of that <laughs> so it's a painful handshake i think we'll see <laughs> um but both of our pain faces is smiling which yeah. is yeah Okay, so I'm just going to add a couple of thoughts as to what I would do, basically, um, if I was coaching this pair, um, as there's probably maybe some of you out there who've got similar sorts of issues. Um, and yeah, just something that might help your rowing. Um, so sort of the kind of like main things that stick out uh, when you're kind of watching this pair um, is if we look at Esme's blade work on the way forward, um, her blade basically rises a bit too much um, on the way forward into the catch and she's just sort of missing um, the water a little bit. So she's not getting that, that backflash quite as well as she could do. And the result, that kind of stern just dips could be a little bit more than they would want to as a crew. Um, and yeah, would, would be able to be a bit more efficient uh, with their rowing. So what I would get them to do, um, aside from kind of the... The obvious of the boat just looking a little bit too small for them so if we look at esme the stroke seek as she kind of comes forward um her hands just dipping a bit too much you can see her blade is quite a lot higher than emily's blade and there's loads of loads of um there's then loads of travel that needs to happen for the blade to come down into the water and she just can't be quite as accurate as her blade so you can see emily's catching just before esme which is actually what you do want in a pair but it's just happening a little bit too much and then there's no backsplash to her blade um, and it gets and it does get rowed in slightly. So I think in part this is basically due to comfort on the way forward, as well as um basically her hand position. So in an ideal world, you would want your outside arm to be completely flat and you just feather with the inside arm. Whereas you can see here with Esme, she feathers with both arms, and then as she comes forward, um, it just makes you want to put too much weight into the handle as you come forward. Now, this is just one contribu contributing contributing factor. You can see Emily does it as well, but um, her blade work is a bit better. The main thing I would want to do with Esme is basically just try and get her a bit more comfortable on the way forward. Um, and to do that, you want basically want your outside shoulder to be that little bit higher and uh, not feel like you're dipping as much coming forward. And a great way to do that is to just shift your weight slightly uh, differently in your seat. 
So even if you're just sitting there on your seat, if you put your a bit more weight into, like if you're a stroke side rower, if you put a bit more weight into your left glute, it's actually going to lift your outside shoulder a little bit more and then vice versa for the bow side. If you put a bit more weight into your right glute, you're actually going to shift, going to bring your outside shoulder up. You know, a lot of times coaches say, oh, lean into your rigor, lean into your rigor. Well, that can be misconstrued as putting weight into your outside rigor, which actually puts you in a more uncomfortable position. So just changing that kind of weight shift slightly can really help your positioning coming, for coming forward on the way forward. So yeah, what I would say to Esme is on the way forward, just think about trying to put a little bit more weight into your left glute. Um, and that way you can think more about rotation on the way forward instead of kind of lunging forward and, and just try to be that little bit more upright. You know, you can see Emily does quite a good job of this. Um, she doesn't kind of lunge at the front. She just rotates around and she's got really good compression uh, to her knee. Whereas with Esme, you can just see it's a little bit lungy. So I'd want her to try and get her seat up to her heels a little bit more, be that bit more upright have that bit more weight in that left glute on the seat so that she can just sit up, rotate, and then there's just less weight in the handle pushing down um, and she can just sit up, rotate, use all that kind of length and power that she's got uh, and have that clicker, quicker, cleaner catch, pick that boat up on the rise, which I know this crew's trying to work on, uh, and row that bit more efficiently and that bit faster. And then there's that other little technical point of, yeah, trying to just feather with the inside arm. You've got the weight in the outside arm, so you've got really good control of the blade and we're not putting yet too much weight into that handle. Cool. So let me know if you found that useful. Um, yeah, just put it in the comments below. If you are looking for this kind of like analysis to your own rowing, um, then I do have a free group, which I do a video analysis session once a week in. Uh, if you're a rower, um, you know, re relatively experienced and are looking for some one-to-one -one coaching, then just send me an email. If you're a new rower uh, and looking to get better on the ergo and looking to row really well on the ergo so you can transfer that onto the water, then I do have a challenge. It's a 10-step process, um, which basically goes through my coaching a bit more in depth. Uh, it's completely free. The link for that is in the description. Okay. Cheers, guys. Uh, and I'll see you on the next video.